It is time for the Hold the Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland, starring Skip Bertman and Dan Canaveri. The latest on the business of sports, LSU sports, LSU baseball, and national sports topics. Here now is the host of the Hold the Rope Show, Tommy Chrysan. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Hold the Rope with Skip and Canner. I'm Dan Canaver. I'm here with Skip Bertman and Lloyd pushing the buttons back here at the studio. Welcome to uh, Hold the Rope. First of all, we want to preview this week's show. We got a great show, we got some good guests. We got Brock Cantra, who is the AD, the athletic director at Baton Rouge Community College. And then uh, also coming on later in the show on Zoom, Jeff Rebele, uh, former LSU baseball player, one of Skip's first players. and of course, a longtime major leaguer. Looking forward to talking with him. But before we move forward, I want to thank our guests from last week, as we do every week, Bob Starkey and uh, Kurt Hester. Coach, what about the guests we had last week? Uh, that was terrific. Uh, uh, there was an article this morning in the editorial about uh, you know, our basketball coach, Kim Mulkey, and uh, what a show it is to go there and how much she wants uh, people to be there. Uh, Starkey now is part of that, so he's going to help, even though she, she <laughs> didn't leave. Well, she's help. she's wonderful, but Bob, in his own right, when he was here as an assistant, he did, was did. a great marketing and promotion. Yeah, he was, actually, he was doing that right 40 years ago. But the difference is nobody cared 40 years ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you did. No, yeah, the AD. That's right. i got to throw this in here since we're talking about women's basketball in the day. Congratulations to our good friend Joe Carvalito being named Whoa. the president of the uh, LSU Alumni Association. Well Skip. deserved. Uh, very, very outstanding young man in, uh, at Louisiana State University at any capacity. Joe Carvalito, congratulations. Yeah, we're real happy for him. But, Skip, the big story is that tight game last night, the uh, CFP championship. Oh, football game? Yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah. You know what I got out of that? I got the only one that was really disappointed was Mattress Mac. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, a lot of people, uh, have, you know, they went with uh, TCU on a, boy, isn't this great, 1938, they deserve it. Uh, what a quarterback. And he shows some of the games they've won have indicated uh, to me that they've had a lot of really good fortune. And as good as they are and as great as a quarterback is, the other team, Georgia, is bigger, stronger, faster, and deeper, <laughs> okay, with players. It isn't a question about anybody got outcoached. Nobody got outcoached. They got manned. Right. Nobody, <laughs> nobody had to play at all. You don't have to call any place. Well, you had to do whatever you want. Georgia just had better players that could <laughs> rotate in and out. Uh, three times, you know, with three of them where the other team couldn't really take the first guy out. So congratulations, TCU, Dan. But I'm telling you that uh, I want to come back to it in our motivational moment about Hunted and Hunter, that the uh, coach from Georgia, who, you know, was LSU, was a graduate assistant with Nick. With Nick and, uh, and of course, Nick. loves Nick. And, uh, oh, loves The highlight Nick. for me of watching last night, of course, as you were saying, they controlled the line of scrimmage. Georgia would take out a guy and bring in a freshman that's going to be the next guy that's yeah, as good as the guy. Even they, and even Herb Street and Fowler admitted, admitted that. Admitted, you know, they and they normally there was don't nothing do they that. could do. It was there in front of you. There's nothing else you could say. Now I'm always going to root for the SEC team if sure. it's not LSU. Of course, I'm going to root. You know, for who's ever there. So I'm glad Georgia won. Now, what kind of stats we got on that? How many times have we Okay, won? well, here's a good one. For the CFP, okay, the SEC's won four straight CFP since they started. Four right. straight titles with three different teams, LSU, Alabama, and now Georgia twice, okay? But in the last eight years, SEC's won the national championship six out of eight and 13 out of the last 17 yeah. years. Strong. Strong. I mean, yeah. you throw it in there that the SEC and with the dominance that they showed last that, night. That's right. It's, and uh, they're just a better – it's a better conference. Uh, then, it's, well, it's the football conference, I'm sorry. It's – remember, they, they may say, well, what about this team? What about that? But we're saying from the top team to the bottom team, 
we're saying there's more, even though there's 14 teams, we're saying that the competitiveness within the 14 in and out, not just talking about Florida-Georgia rivalry or LSU-Mississippi, talking any game, any week with a conference team, uh, it's best in America uh, like it is in other sports. Well, I'll tell you what, we looked at the AP Top 25. That came out. Uh, you got Georgia, number one, TCU, number two, Michigan, three, Ohio State, number four, Alabama, five, Tennessee, six, Penn State, seven, Washington, eight, Tulane, number nine. Congratulations to Tulane. And then Utah rounded out number 10. But in the top 25, LSU, 16, out of the SEC, Mississippi State is number 20, South Carolina, number 23. So out of the top 25, six teams from the SEC. Well, that's pretty good. In baseball, there's like six in the top ten. Uh, you know, baseball's really exceptional. But uh, there isn't any doubt that this, this, is, this conference is uh, dynamite. And uh, we're going to read you off some later on. For all you now. folks out there uh, working and grinding for a living, uh, we want to break. <laughs> yeah. You know, like uh, yeah, you you know, folks, pushing well, your well, business. We're not doing or, that now. Huh? Not, we're not doing that now. We can't. We, we got, oh, it's a perfect well, No, time. we got to kick the guy, Dan. We got to move along. We got to move sorry, along. big guy. Well, okay, we'll come back to it later. So hang in there, folks. Keep grinding at your job. We're going to talk about football coaches' salaries. Well, right now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we got Brock Cantrell, the athletic director at Baton Rouge Community College. You're watching Hold the Rope on YouTube right here from FM Media Digital Studio. Hey, everyone. This is Buddy, our new team member. Why are you smiling like that? Jerry Lane Chevrolet, what's your favorite color car? We have SUVs, we have trucks, we have cars. Oh, and we have fast cars. Okay, we need this car done by the end of the day. All done. What the? All righty. And if you sign right here, we can have your car ready for you. Spreading joy and Christmas cheer for all of Baton Rouge to hear. As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. China's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute! For a reservation, call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. Fat Tuesday's Casino, located in the Plaquemine Truck Stop on Highway 1 in Plaquemine, Louisiana. Come out to Fat Tuesday's Casino, where every day is a carnival. If you're ready to win some money, please visit Fat Tuesday's Casino in the Plaquemine Truck Stop, Plaquemine, Louisiana. Since opening our first Benny's Car Wash location in 1951, we continue to employ the latest in automated car wash technology, from the use of electronic sensor technology to the chemistry and engineering of cleaning agents. Over the years, our car care services have expanded to include detailing, oil changes, state inspections, along with Be Quick convenience stores and fueling stations. After seven decades of successful operations, we are proud to have nine locations serving the Baton Rouge area. For more information, go to Benny'sCarWash.com.
everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope uh, with Skip and Cano right here from the FM studios. Skip was so excited about our next guest. He just couldn't wait. And uh, But uh, Skip, you got some other things you want to talk about before we go to the business of sports. I do. I, before you go there, I want to talk about this guy. Uh, uh, Brock Cantro. That's his name? That's not my check. <laughs> okay. I mean, and you pray, and you might have eaten with him also. <laughs> Bistro Byers. Where it's, it was outstanding. Where not you a bad knew place that to eat. Anybody can run that. Yeah. Brock <laughs> can run the athletic form. Can you run the athletic form. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> now, this, now, I'm asking you a question uh, for the audience. And please answer. Number one is you are the full time athletic director at Baton Rouge Community College, which is right off of government. No, Florida, Coach. Florida, government. Right, right hey, between of, government and Florida, Florida he's right. Florida, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. directly across the street from the old Beast of our own, right. which That's was right. right. where Spoken Hub is right now. Yep. Well, so you, 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 uh, that's where the – that's one of the more underappreciated – uh, happenings here in Baton Rouge. People don't really realize it, how good that is. It is. It is. I, t- I tell you what. I hear it all the time. I hear that it's the best kept secret in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Um, and I, I tell. I say this all the time. My job is to make it not the best kept secret yeah. in Baton Rouge. Um, I think my chancellor is doing a really good job promoting the college. Uh, I think the community college in general is a blessing for Baton Rouge. Um, I think it's underserved. Um, I think uh, the more that people know about it, the more people will continue to go there. Pretty and nice. same thing for the athletic department. You know, uh, we've got a beautiful gym. Um, you know, we've got an incredible baseball team. Um, and very few people know about it. And uh, that's why I'm here the tooting the well, horn. let's go uh, a little further than baseball. Excuse me, Dan, mm-hmm. if, I, okay. if I jumped you there. Uh, this, you did, but that's okay. Uh, that's, that's, that was a uh, – a uh, big deal for me when they opened up. I thought, whoa, what a wonderful thing to have your junior college mm-hmm. you know, right here in your town, like hundreds of uh, hundreds of other universities right. uh, have. And uh, then, of course, uh, let's see. I remember, uh, and I'm positive that when Lyle Mouton played, mm. so this was 1991, right? <laughs> yeah, 1991 Mouton. Mm-hmm. His mother was the president of the university. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Lyle's yeah. a pretty good basketball player, too. That's correct. And <laughs> he uh, she on a basketball team. And she, she, yeah, she was involved in how she got started. And she, she's very, very nice. And mm-hmm. she worked her way up. She's a nice lady. Anyway, to play, you know, it had it, anything like that, it's got its uh, economic problems. Yep. So, you know, well, we can't give them because we got to give them, you know, and that kind of That's how it is a little tough. Uh, let me ask you something before you begin. So tell me that I was there from knew, knew about it in the very, very beginning. And then, of course, uh, uh, L.J. Dupree mm-hmm. was a coach. Did an incredible job. Yeah. He had, he had an incredible run. Um, uh, I can't, the first, I can't, was the first I, coach well, I saw, Charlie yeah. something? What was his name? Charlie? I don't remember the first coach. I, L.J. LJ was there as far as, I can, as far as I can remember. Wait a minute. Did you come to L.J.'s final game when he was being? I didn't get to go. Oh, you didn't go. I was because okay. uh, they I was, had introduced Charlie yeah. Dawson. That's who it was. Charlie yes, Dawson, that's you're exactly coach. right. Yeah, I was knee deep in Beast Joe Barones at that point in time in my life. Yeah. I was uh, I was flipping burgers, I think. Well, that's <laughs> right. And uh, we, it's a great job. I mean, it, it's a wonderful place. And like them all, Brock, uh, oh, even like the restaurants, uh, you know, it's got to start. It's got to show you something and continue to grow, like this, just like a good football program or a good business. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, um, Skip. One of the things that I've always admired about what you have done is, is you built a baseball program from scratch. Um, and I have the opportunity. And what I love as a challenge is, is I'm walking into a program that was has had some success, but limited su- success. And um, you know, Baton Rouge Community College is a flagship community college of Louisiana. Um, I want the Baton Rouge community college baseball team, softball team, basketball team, the, the flagship teams of Louisiana. There's no reason why we can't do that um, as long as we work hard at it, um, sure. hire the right people, um, get the right kids in the system, um, and, and go out. And, and, and I mean, truth be told, you know, got to go raise some money to make it happen. Um, it's, well, you do. You need some money, and it takes time. Yep. I want to ask you, uh, you know, the baseball program, one of the things that helps you out is you guys use Goldsby Field, mm-hmm. and you got a great relationship with Breck. Breck, mm-hmm. And uh, 
of course, LJ, when he came, raised a lot of money and did a lot of improvements to the yep. stadium. And we're, we're, and we're the continuing to do that. And yep. came in. Yep. They put some money in with the original owners. Yep. Where does softball play? That's kind of a hidden So secret. Yeah, so yeah, softball this year is going to play at Oak Villa uh, with Breck. They just turfed all their fields. And uh, they just turfed there. all the fields. So that really helps with the rain outs and, uh, and delays. So it's, it's a really nice situation for us for this year. We're kind of looking for a, for a home that we can call home. Right. Um, it's going to take us a little bit of time to find it. But eventually I think it's going to come around and we'll find the right place to, to hang our hat and call our own. Now your men and women's basketball. Tell us about those programs and how they're playing the Bon Sante uh, Arena, which is a 3,500 square, uh, 3,500 uh, seats, 3,500 folks. It's gorgeous. I mean, it is probably the next best gym at Baton Rouge, except for the PMAC. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the Does sound it beat is Dunham. What's that? Does it beat Dunham? It be, yeah, I'm gonna say, uh, yeah. Jim I'm, Bernhardt. Yeah, I, I, I was there when he built it. Now, I know. <laughs> I mean, the wood, the wood bleachers are kind of nice, but well, the Hoosiers uh, the, look, the nice. look is kind of nice. But uh, uh, we're do, we're doing some work on it. We got some new goals coming in. We're redoing the locker rooms. We're gonna redo the weight room and kind of update things um, just to bring it up into the 2023s. So it's kind of hadn't been touched in probably 15 years, but it's still a gorgeous arena. That's great, mm-hmm. Coach. Well, I want to go a little further than the uh, athletics right mm-hmm. now. Uh, who's the president now? Uh, Dr. Willie Smith. Uh, he's been there since 2020. Uh, I knew him I, when I was coaching uh, basketball at Tulane. He was playing football at Tulane. Um, and, and what I love about him, and the reason I took this job is because of him, uh, he's the first chancellor there that really thinks that athletics it can be an integral part of the college. Yeah. Um, and he you understands know, you, what it can do. Yeah, you know, you told me that. Yep. <laughs> And, uh, I wouldn't have taken the job. You know, I mean, and that, yeah, that I, makes all the difference in the world. And you got somebody up there that really sees it and knows that it can happen. That's true. Uh, remember, LJ did a good job, mm-hmm. and they competed mm-hmm. and played. But uh, in order for this thing to work, you do. You need that one, two, three, maybe four different recruits. Mm-hmm. See that you wouldn't have got, or you would have got. Right. <laughs> you know, and and we define success. You know, the way I define success is is threefold. Um, we want to bring kids in that that need a place to go academically or athletically to mature. Either way, I do, it, community colleges aren't just for kids that are dumb. How, how much does it cost to go there? Forty three hundred dollars a semester. Can you, say, can you say that again? Yeah. Forty three hundred dollars a semester. I, I laugh because you know, and I love Gordon and these guys that are giving NIL money. To these guys, you know, the <laughs> money that they, we give to some of these guys could fund the entire athletic department for probably ten years. You know, yeah, it's sure. uh, and, and it's a and it's money well received and it's doing yeah, it's yeah. actually yes. doing some some so good. It's a, it, it's a great place, and I'm glad you're here. Don't want to get stuck just with baseball. Yep. Because you got to raise the whole, uh, but but p- baseball is a sport that you can get involved in. Yep. I mean, the AD can yep. get involved in. The coach can also get into the community. It's not like football, right? Well, you wouldn't see Brian Kelly asking for <laughs> a ra- any money out there. I got a question for yep. you on this. Uh, you know, we talk about. We talked on the phone and talked about this. The JC with uh, the way things are with the transfer portal, mm-hmm. with NIL and everything, it's a new model now. It and is. We talked about that. It's, it's not just about the kid that left a, a Division One school and has to go there for a year so he can go on a 424 transfer. Yep. It's not for the kid that wasn't academically eligible. It's a different model. Tell the folks it is. we it, talked it about. Is. And, and it's, it, in my mind, it's, it's going to go back to being a really, really good model for college coaches. Much because better. you have guys that are in the, in the transfer portal, that, let's take basketball, for example, that average five minutes a game. Um, they were number 10 on the bench. You don't know anything about them. I mean, they played five minutes a game and they left because they didn't get to play enough. Nobody knows what they can do. You got and, and somewhat entitled to a degree. They're leaving because they're not playing enough. You have guys that come play for me, and they're playing 30 minutes a game. You know exactly what you get when you're recruiting them, and you know they're going to work hard. They're there, and they've worked. I mean, they've worked to get where they're going, as opposed to just quitting and not because they're not playing enough and taking the next step. And I, I just think things are kind of cyclical, and eventually the college, you know, the the D1 coaches are going to come back to looking at JUCO for those tough kids that are uh, they have toughed it out and kind of taken the hard road. Plus, we talked about academically, 
the community college, you know, Baton Rouge Community College is moving more into the trades. It is. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's um, the workforce development is incredible. But it's not all trades. It's not. I mean, and that's the beauty of it. I mean, you can you can pick your path. I mean, I have kids that can come, and I have a, a, a girl that was a, a women's basketball player. Um, she wanted to go play after, decided not to. She's coaching for us right now, and she's going to go back and, and go ahead and get her M master's and um, – and uh, medical masters and do coding and in two years she'll have a job making sixty thousand dollars a year you know so so it's not a dead end right you know some kids they get to the end of their two years and they don't make it to to division one what, what do they do then what they go back to school and they can pick up a trade and in two years be making you know fifty thousand dollars a year I, I, oh i'm sorry are you gonna have you remember back because you were playing uh you know and uh that was a good time mm -hmm. but if you transferred, uh, you had to sit out. Mm -hmm. So if you were a freshman, you could step, excuse me for saying that, you could step down. Yep. But I mean, they could step, instead of a university level, they'd go to junior mm -hmm. college instead. And then they'd come back. Right. See, and, and I always felt like the junior college was being used As for a, a particular a, sport. Yep. Yeah, it, it was like that for a while. You know, what can happen now, even better a situation is, if a kid was trying to decide whether they want to go to a low Division One school and then try to transfer up, it's which they're doing now. They're going to a, a low D1 knowing that they want to go and prove they, themselves they and, and up. step up. Well, if they come to me for a year and they step up to a mid-major, they still have their one-time transfer. So they can transfer to, a, to a, they can go to a high D1. So we, we have right. the unique ability to kind of house these kids um, that are, and, and, and let them play instead of sitting in a portal waiting for somebody to try to pick them up. Question for you. Um, talk about the biggest challenge, challenges you face as the AD at Baton Rouge Community College right now today. Funding. I mean, we are 100% funded by student fees. Um, and so our funding goes up and down depending on enrollment. Um, we are blessed right now to, know, to, to have, uh, I think, our highest enrollment in probably 11 years. We're at 9,100 students, which is actually more than Southern. Um, but as it goes, it, you know, so we go. Um, and as you well know, it's, it, it's not cheap to run an athletic department. No. Um, and, uh -huh. and what we're raising money for is direct costs for our student athletes, which is housing, uh, tuition and meals. Sure, I mean, that's that's all I'm raising money so for. So in other words, you're just looking to pay four hundred and thirty, four thousand three hundred dollars for their for their tuition, and then again, and then the forty three hundred dollars. Yep. So, the, so yeah, you're talking yep. about nine hundred dollars. Yep, nine thousand. And it, or nine thousand. Yep. It's a wonderful. It's an incredible investment. I mean, you know, and, yeah, effort. Got, and, I, and we've had some some people step up and and starting to really understand what the junior college can do. You know, I, it, I didn't, I, I, I wasn't that versed in it until I got here. And now I am a I am a huge proponent of what community colleges do for the community. Uh, uh, Brock, uh, I'm sorry if I'm taking too much time. No, <laughs> no. I, I hey, you're the star. I'm just, yeah, that's right. I, I'm just saying that this this is something that we understand. Well, as baseball coaches, mm -hmm. we know. Oh, we dealt with junior God. colleges, mm -hmm. Do you sending know? kids there and getting kids from there so, both but, ways. But we as coaches grew up with junior college. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, I grew up with yeah. Miami Dade. Yep. Yeah. And then Miami Dade South, Miami Dade Central. It was yep. wonder. It was a big hit. Yep. You know, oh, I, I'm familiar with those schools. You know, I spent some time in Miami coaching basketball, and, and, uh, yeah. and we kind of dabbled in the same yeah. arenas. I think we're just a little bit slow in Louisiana to kind of catch up to what the community colleges and junior colleges can do. I well, think how, now how do we compare to Mississippi, who's got a great junior college system? Well, yeah, well, they, they're, they're old. I mean, they've been around for 100 years. You know, we're, we're, like we're, we're 25 years old. Campuses. Yeah, they're That's beautiful. Good. That's a good call. Yep. I mean, they, we'll, me, we'll get there. Let me there. say, but on the other hand, uh, Mississippi. Uh, I mean, the all, the best quarterback in the United States with two national championships. Went to Jones Community mm -hmm. College. He yeah. went to the community yep. college. But why did he go to that community college? There's only one reason. He wanted to use that football program yep. up, and then he could move out. Yep. Wanted so, to play. Show his well, skills. I mean, I mean, he wanted. He yeah, but we're not bad. You know, so maybe no, that's not true. <laughs> now with all of the money involved. Yeah. And all of the players, I'll tell you another thing real quick. The greatest thing about this TV show is you got to come up with what you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to follow some script or right. something that we've got time. Okay. And th this entire TV business, okay, 
is so huge mm-hmm. that none of us could realize what they're doing now on social media mm-hmm. with so oh, was already a TikTok, but there are <laughs> hundreds. Ooh, <skip> stepping up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. Skip, <laughs> boy. You're right. Who says you're ancient? Come on. <laughs> that's right. Come on. All right. You're right. I'm, I'm, I'm way back in the cave on that. But the truth is, those you, places now can shoot you like this. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about in in showbiz and mm-hmm. musical. Right. As musicians, you play the piano and you get the following and you build a son, you're an influencer. Next thing you know, you go to college and you're a gymnast and you're making millions of yeah, dollars. It's, it's, Whoever it's, thought that it would be that way. And it's new to us, uh, all of us. It, it, it is. It, it, but it's, re- it's really new for you and for the president. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that junior, it, it's so what a what a plus it is to have that right here in Baton Rouge. Right. It's an untapped resource. You didn't even know what a junior college was, and and now people do. Well, right? because yep. we didn't have one yep. in Louisiana, and there was no way to promote it. Now that there was no way for people to understand right. it, and that's what athletics, I think, really does. Yeah, that, we, right. we are the, the so foghorn you, for well, BRCC. Sure, yep. it's the publicity, it's yep. the front door yep. before you get into the real estate well, and open the. You want to make a sale? You got to have some you athletics. Door. Yep, you got to open the door. And the press, so the president wins, whether he likes athletics or not. Everybody and of wins. Of course, everybody in athletics that sees it, plays it, and communicates it through the media, and watches it, yep. and roots yep. benefits too. It's, uh, Speaking about not knowing, I got a question. Yeah, tell us your coaches. Like a lot uh, of people yes. don't know who they yeah, are. Tell you yeah. who you, uh, go ahead. You're so right. My, my, my women's basketball coach is Paula Lee. Um, Paula Used to be at LSU was with, Pokey. with 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 Pokey and with Sue at LSU. She was a manager for Sue Gunner, um, and she's been there for I think probably she, I laugh I, I say 37 years, but she's been there for, I think 15 years. Um, she, she's kind of the one that's kind of has been through all the wars and knows where all the bones are and has seen the ups and downs and who I kind of lean on a lot. I was going to say valuable resource. That's a really valuable resource. Uh, I've been friends with her for 15 years. I've, I've, I've always loved her. Uh, my men's basketball coach is Don Green, who was at Parkview, had Jermaine uh, Williams, who played for LSU. Um, my baseball coach is um, – Thomas Semino, who's Wade Semino's son, who y'all probably know from the coaching circles. You know circles. Wade well. Yeah. That's amazing. When I came up here, Wade was still playing. Mm, yeah. Talking about his dad. Yeah. Was a player. And next thing you know, he wanted to be a coach. Mm. And he did. He He's coached pretty Louisiana good at, yeah. Tech for a while. Mm-hmm. And, of course, he was a U, uh, ULL for a while. Hey, Episcopal started the program in Episcopal. Mm-hmm. Well, he did. He started mm-hmm. the yep. actual. You know, Built the field. Yep. Uh, Mark Swear is my uh, my softball coach. I, um, he was at Hendricks College in um, in Arkansas. He's a long time high school coach in South Louisiana. Um, was at Centenary for a little bit. I hired. I got hired two weeks before school started. I hired him a week before school started. So he's uh, hit the ground running. I'm going to tell you though, you got a great assistant coach who's worked camp for us. Worked for Randy Davis. Played in South Carolina with Brian Roundtree. Mm. Is he still there? He's not, but he was great. He was good. <laughs> no, Roundtree, yeah. he left. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry that, about yeah, that. That's, that's true. No, but Roundtree did a nice job. I, got some, I have some great assistant he, coaches Dan, as well. Dan's yeah. right. Roundtree yeah. was terrific. Yeah. And it's hard to keep him. It, it's hard because you can't, can't finance can't. it. It is, you know. They, but the, we've done, you know. We're making we're making strides to be successful. And, and and you're right, you know. You look at the Mississippi schools, and, and I have to be patient because it's going to take us some time. Like when to you get look there. at Pearl they're River coming down in, in, a, in, in a new bus, you know, in in, in, in fancy uniforms, and they got a, a play-by-play announcer. And I'm, you know, I'm like, we're going to get there. Just be patient. We're going to take baby steps. Yeah, you know, when there. you go to a Pearl River and they've got yeah. suites, yeah. and a grandstand, and they got turf, yeah, you know, and they got new buildings. <laughs> Buildings going up. It, it, it's tough, but it's it's. it's but it's, you guys are doing a heck of a it's job. It's doable, and, and if You're you work hard, with them. If, with, it, from an athletic standpoint, I mean, I, I mean, we are competing. You know, what what I want to compete is where I metric success is community involvement. Uh, how sure. many people are coming to our games? I mean, do people we're, know we're, about us? You can go the, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean, winning a winning a JUCO championship. There's there's no uh, you know TV rights. That's cash correct. that comes well, to no, us when we do, when we right, do you that. Can't get the TV. I, I, I want I want people like y'all coming to my games and, and yes. being a vital part of the community of Baton Rouge. It's easy to get to the uh, Pete Goldsby. It's a great uh, yes. a great field. The Bonsante is right there on Government Street. The, you park across the street. Yes, you don't pay is. for parking. It's only I've ten dollars to get in. So you know that's. 
that's that's kind of my measure of success is are we getting the community involved in the athletic sure. department? Let me ask you this on the baseball end. Having the Rougarou with a good friend Ronnie Rance <laughs> in the park. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Does that is that helping you get more exposure? People coming out to it Goldsby? Has, yeah, people. I mean, anytime we get people to Pete Goldsby and they get there and they see it's it, and it's a great little stadium. I mean, we're we're all working hard. We, it's got its problems, as we all know, but we're working hard at, at slowly addressing those problems and making it even better. You know, that whole area I think is going to continue to get better. Um, I think Breck has some plans to redo some stuff down there with Memorial and some of that. So I think we're in a in a nice little area right now. Well, folks, we're going to take a break. Uh, and we'll come back right after this. We're going to have Brock stay on for another segment. We'll talk a little uh, Tigers. you got a little info on the Tigers, especially <laughs> basketball. But we want to talk a little bit and talk some more about BRCC. So we'll be back after these messages. You're watching Hold the Rope on FM Digital Media. Sometimes simple is better. Like Sammy's signature white beans and catfish. Comfort food at its best and simply delicious. Sammy's better than ever. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barbershop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Bayou Apparel has been helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. As one of only a few local LSU official licensees, Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand. Whether you have an established brand or not, Bayou Apparel design experts can help you create an eye-catching design that fits your company's message. We do logos, event t-shirts, and promotional items for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to our website at at www.buyourapparel.com. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. For all of your insurance solutions, contact the Allegiance Group in Baton Rouge. Health, life, home, auto, property and casualty, and Medicare. They can enroll you in Medicare or review your Medicare plan. The office is located on Jefferson Highway across from the Bocage entrance. Locally owned and operated, great customer service. Connect on Facebook and Instagram, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions, or call 225-620-6990, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Kendall. Dan Canterbury here with Skip Bergman. We got Brock Cantrell. We were chopping it up. You heard that, Roger Cator. We were chopping it up. Panama. Panama. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk a little basketball with uh, Brock, with your background, of course. Tell us, you, we're talking off air about uh, Matt, uh, 
Coach Matt McMahon. Yeah, I, I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple times. I had lunch with him uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, really, really like the guy. I mean, I think Scott's done a great job hiring folks that are, understand how to coach in today's world. Um, you almost have to be a GM-ish and, uh, and have a, a, a plan. It's, you know, unfortunately, the days of recruiting kids just because um, you're over there talking to them so much, is, it's gone. I mean, you're, it's, it's NIL, there's dollars involved. Um, but one of the things that, that I loved when I was talking to him, you know, I think I was actually with Kyle's Temple as well, and Kyle said, what's the first thing, you, when you were coming here, what's the first thing you, you thought you needed to get taken care of? And, and Matt sat there for a second and he said, uh, I want to make sure I got my family settled, my kids got a good school and, and make them comfortable. And I thought that was just brilliant because that's the way you have to think, right? Sure. I mean, the standard answer, let, let me go find the best player. Yeah. But um, that, that guy's here for the long term and want to make sure everything was settled at the house before he started yeah. to spread his wings and do what he needed to do for LSU. Yeah, one of the things he's brought out in meetings and, and spending some time with him working at TF and going to functions and, and talking with Matt, his thing is he wants kids that want to be here, want to develop and want to be here for the long haul just like him. Mm -hmm. And in this day and age, that's – really got to be your base and then you pick up some transfer much what brian kelly in his second year has really started to, and started I, to and I think get into that. you know the one thing that that's you know this that's hurting him right now is you know on the recruiting trail just the the not knowing what the ncaa is going to do as far as postseason um that puts him at a huge disadvantage right now when it comes to recruiting go, go ahead Coach. There, there's a lesson for all of us here about the media uh and how disruptive they can mm -hmm. possibly be you read the newspaper when it comes out in that morning edition you pick it up and read that one okay as opposed to some people go right to the internet right. or something yeah, right? no, my, my dad and i are newspaper well this readers. morning did you see where there are two coaches that are on the market dan in basketball that are looking in the loser's bracket you know i mean of the, the, the other teams and those ADs of all the coaches they were looking for was our coach, Matt McMahon, mm -hmm. and one other coach that I didn't know. Uh, I don't know who he is at all. Now, of course, Matt McMahon's not going anywhere, mm -hmm. but the media can produce that because, you know, Matt McMahon didn't do that. Right. Boy, it's a media has got some amazing stuff. If you have to read the book Spare. <laughs> yeah. It's a, you know, see, it's, it's see what news. the redheaded yeah, kid has news. to say. Yeah, it's, it's a, and he's been doing a good job of it, you know, of recruiting otherwise. Um, and, and it, but, you know, the guy can coach. I mean, he can flat out, he can flat out coach. It's fun to watch what he does. After timeouts, he's probably 65, 75% putting the ball in the right guy's hands and scoring. ATOs, out of balance plays are brilliant. Um, which is hard to do at this level because there's so many coaches on staff that are that are that can break down film and figure out what you're doing. Um, but he just really has a knack for um, the in-game coaching. Now I've watched, I think every almost every game on TV. Uh, he's competing with basically when he walked in the door, he had no players. A roster he put together in a month. Right, he put together like his PE but, class. I'll yeah. take you first, yep. you second. Okay, but I, they're competitive in every game. Yep. What do you think they, they need to fill to be at that level of the SEC? Because you can't complain about what – I think no, he's maxed this team. I, I think, I think and they're getting, playing hard. They're doing everything a coach can do. I've always said the, the one thing that you need in the SEC or in, in high division one is a player that can go get his own shot. Um, they can go score. You ask John Brady, Marcus Thornton won – 15 games for, for John Brady. When everything else breaks down, <laughs> right, you, you got to have a guy that can go get a bucket for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's coming here in, in the future. Do, do any of your coaches have a, what they call grants, scholarships, mm -hmm. to give to the kids to pay for the tuition? It, 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 for Matt? Any, any of the sports – at the junior college, have oh, he's going back to oh, junior college. Go back, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, some. I mean, but we supplement that with you know because we have limited income from from our uh, student fees, we have to supplement that with um, the fundraising that we do. So what we're no, the no nil stuff. I'm mean, I, I, we're not full with nil. I mean, okay. We just want to look if these kids are so happy if they, if we give them a, a breakfast and a lunch, somewhere to hang their hat and yeah. a scholarship. That's, now, that's do you all get really to? Want. 
Do you have uh, Pell Grant money and other financial aid? That, yeah. The, so yeah. that's probably big at the junior college too to augment it what you It helps. Them. Yeah, it absolutely helps. I mean, that, that um, you know, but people don't understand is that once you pay for those three things, there's they still need money. I mean, they got to buy toothpaste, sure. toothbrushes, underwear. I mean, like it's Laundry not like, the, like that's all you need to survive. Uh, you know, away from your parents. I mean, like you know, you, grocery store. I mean, you, you mean toilet paper. I mean, these are things that people yeah, don't understand that, that you get paid for, right? And so that and so when I go ask people for money, I, I don't feel bad about it because I know when I'm asking people for money that that money is getting used to change somebody's life. And for me, that's an easy ask. Okay, well, Brock, we appreciate you coming. And uh, best of luck to you at uh, Baton Rouge Community College. I know uh, you're excited about basketball here around the Baton Rouge area with what's going on with men and women at LSU and, of yep. course, what's going on at your place with men yep. and women. And we're uh, hopefully we raise the awareness of people, hey, the LSU's not playing or you're sitting around. Go to BRCC right off of government. Check out the baseball. Check out the basketball. Stop by Bistro Barons on the way. It's a double there whammy, go. bro. We're good to go. Right across <laughs> hold it. Hold it. Hold it. you got to pay for that advertising on this show. Sure. Free meals for both you guys next time you come. We're Whoa. good. To go. Everybody eats for free. See, Skip, I told you we could get an NIL deal. <laughs> Working Folks, NIL. Brock, thanks for being with us. I've enjoyed Folks, it. Folks, we're going to take Brock. a break, yep. and we'll be right back after this. we got Jeff Rebele coming on on Zoom. We're going to talk a little baseball with Jeff Rebele. You're watching Hold the Rope. Excuse me. Where were you going with all those keys? I was stealing them so that no one would get them as Christmas gifts. I've got a better idea. Why don't you come join us for our Christmas party? But I was just stealing your keys. I know, but I'm inviting you anyway. Why? Because it's Christmas. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from afar. Maybe perhaps Christmas is a Jerry Lane car. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable Storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, yeah, can you awesome hear me? beer cave, and a great selection of anything awesome. you might need on your trip. No worries. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Advanced Windshield has served the Baton Rouge area for over 20 years. They take pride in the two-technician system where we can ensure a proper seal every time. We will not compromise quality to cut costs by only having one technician in the truck. This also helps us provide quicker services than our competitors. We are dedicated to providing the highest quality work with the quickest service. Go to advancedwindshield.com or call them at 225-248-6788. That's advancedwindshield.com. Doyle Electric has been impacting our community for over four decades. Established in 1978, our work helps to build a better quality of life for ourselves, our family, and friends in our community. Our success is built on core values of excellence, teamwork, integrity, and meritocracy. Committed to excellence, we'd love to hear about your upcoming project and figure out how Doyle Electric can help. Call us at 225-752-5112 or go to our website at www.doyleelectricinc.com. At Baker Gulf Coast Industrial, a full-service civil and deep foundations contractor, every day is a chance to play for the winning team. We're looking for first-string players to help us build the future of the region. Success on our field is defined by grit, tenacity, and the will to get the job done right the first time. You'll gain the advantage with steady work, excellent pay, and plenty of opportunities to advance. Apply today to join our team at BakerGCI.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com. Hey, folks, welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Ken. Dan Canterbury here. You're listening to the 
ivories of uh, Lloyd Courtney here on the uh, on the show. But uh, guys, it's time for a dugout talk. But first of all, this segment has is being brought to you by Lockett at the Restaurant. We're going to talk a little LSU baseball with Jeff Rebele, a little dugout talk. And uh, he's got some stories. He's got uh, a lot of things from the early years with Skip uh, Bertman. But uh, dugout talk brought to you by Hudco Roofing and Exteriors. Hudco has become one of the area's premier professional roofing contractors specializing in residential roofing services. Mm-hmm. Call HUDCO today at 225-414-6153. Learn more about our residential roofing services, quality workmanship, premium products, and unparalleled customer service at HUDCO Roofing and Exteriors. And Jeff Rebele on the Zoom. Jeff, welcome aboard. Good to be here, fellas. How's everybody down there in Baton Rouge? There he is. <laughs> We're doing well, uh, Jeff. Thank you very, very much. Very nice to see you. We're uh, matter of fact, uh, we'll be at a meeting tomorrow night with your good friend Pete Bush. Obviously, it must have Absolutely. something to do with LSU baseball, and it does. I tell you what, though, I'm <laughs> proud of you. You got your twins and your LSU going today. Yeah, I mean, you got it all working. Boy, I, hey, I don't get to wear the purple and gold up here very often no. in Ohio State country. So you know, anytime I can bust it out, it's a good day. Well, it's a good day for us, uh, Reb was uh, Smoke Laval was pretty much uh, involved mostly uh, with Smoke and, uh, with uh, Jeff until I got a chance to talk to him one day. We liked your coach. All right. That is Smoke. Yeah, Bob Simmons. Right, Simmons. Bob Simmons. Well, that was yeah. a Triton Junior College, right? Triton? Absolutely. Yeah. Hall well, of Fame guy there, yeah. That's correct. We, 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 I knew of him, but we didn't know where it was. We didn't know what it was. And we went, but then when I had a chance to talk to you, it was all over. This is a guy who played in the big leagues for over 12 years. He likes to say I fooled them for 12 years. But the truth of it is, uh, without being gifted at six foot six or 270 pounds or running a 4 3 40, he has none of that. He's got the no. big, now he's got the biggest heart in the world and his head's big he's smart all right and he plays the game well they sensed that and they kept you for how long in the big leagues really jeff i played 12 and then uh 18 professionally so it took me a while to get called up <laughs> but he played 12 Coach, in the big leagues Coach, only five five percent of the people oh, that ever lived that did. wait say that again yeah I- I just said it, it took him a while to figure out that I really wasn't that bad. It was, you know, it was okay. Yeah. Well, what they found was that uh, it was kind of, kind of like this uh, football quarterback uh, from Georgia, Stetson Bennett. Yeah. Stetson Bennett, right? Mm-hmm. He was the MVP, Jeff, in last year's quarterfinal, last year's championship. Last year's quarterfinal, this year's quarterfinal, this year. He was MVP out of four times, all four times. That's the kind of guy that you want to have on the field. Uh, Jeff was an MVP guy at shortstop. He could coach the other guys and, uh, you know, made a lot of difference. 86 and 87. So he took us to the World Series yeah. twice. Uh, Reb, one, these yeah. young, guy, young guys that are watching uh, tonight, young players, yeah. One of the things that made helped you make the big leagues and kept you in the big leagues was the fact that you could play a lot of different positions and do a lot of things off the bench to help help the team win. Is that correct? That is correct. I mean, it was uh, like Coach said. I wasn't uh, super gifted, but uh, as he would say, HWA is what Stetson Bennett has. You know how to win awareness, and uh, I, you know, I don't know. He they nicknamed me Savvy. I think Skip said I had a lot of savvy, so it kind of stuck with me with with the LSU crowd. And uh, it just kind of worked out that way, that you just kind of do your thing, you play. I learned fundamentals, like you said, from uh, from Coach Bob Simmons up there at Triton. And then it was the perfect scenario for me to come down to LSU and play for Skip and learn all the finer points of, you know, besides the fundamentals, but just learning, you know, when to pick guys off and hold runners and how to steal bases. and. Pretty much, uh, you know, that translated into pro ball where I caught the ball through at the first base pretty well and stuck around long enough being a good teammate and uh, got a break and the rest is history. Skip, I want to – anytime we bring somebody in from the early days 
uh, Reb. You got to give us a story, uh, something about your early days at LSU before it is what it, uh, before it was what it is now, where guys don't even know where the tarp is stored, let alone <laughs> pull it. They don't know what a rake looks like. They think that's something that the groundskeeper no. has to keep. You know. Tell us about yeah, the early days. Little, there was a lot of little rocks around by the cages <laughs> back in the day. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you, a, for instance, uh, just a quick early story. First day, I show up at a Triton, and I went to play in a summer ball. I was at a Stan Usual World Series, and I, I get in that night from Battle Creek, Michigan. It's about 10 o'clock at night. I got to drive the next day to LSU, and I'm three weeks late for school already. So I get down to school, I, I drive, it's 16 hour drive, and uh, I slept like two hours and two and a half hours in a rest stop on the way. I pull up to the, to the baseball offices where, you know, Skip, the baseball offices, as you recall, were like some double wides over there on the side. <laughs> and uh, I pull up to the office, I stroll in with my gear, I come strolling in at 8.40, about 8.40 in the morning, I stroll in and Skip goes, hey, Reb, you're here. I'm like, yeah, coach, and I'm here. And uh, he goes, uh, hey, uh, you got a class at nine o'clock. And I'm like, okay. He's like, psychology class, let's look it up. Yeah, psychology, nine o'clock. He goes, Coach Geldy, Coach Geldy was our our, uh, our grad assistant coach. And he said, you got a, you got a notebook? He's like, yeah, coach, or uh, Skip, I got a notebook. He goes, give him a pen and a notebook and get him in a golf cart and get him to that class. And I'm like, what is going on? What's the urgency? <laughs> well, I found out later you could be signed and uh, before you step foot in class. So that was that was the first day. At hey, don't ever you can't fool the skipper, but he fooled you. Yeah, uh, he, he had a plan. I had a plan, but I tell you what, it could work uh, uh, with Reb uh, because of what he said. The H W, the how to win awareness is kind of a gift that not. Uh, Everybody has. You hear it mentioned on TV a lot, but not in so many words when the uh, color guy uh, is uh, shocked by what happened. You know, like, whoa, we don't see that very yeah. often. Yeah, that's an HWA guy. Uh, how's your family? Everything all right? Everybody's great, Coach. Um, I'm actually – two of my sons, one of them's coaching high school. The other one uh, works with me at my organization that I have, Rep Sports Academy, and – He's been growing that out, and we're we actually have some decent players. We're starting to get it going. We coach them up. We learn the uh, skip way, like all the other former players do, and we pass on that knowledge. and And it's pretty cool to see these kids get better. They need it. They're not being coached very well, so uh, we we pass on all the things that we've learned. and And a lot of them came. Most of them came from LSU. Well, you you uh, and, definitely yeah. have uh, with your boy. You you definitely. It's easy. He's the one that I met. When you came down to Pete's, uh, and he's yeah, he, he was at University of New Orleans, right, uh, right. At, at the time. Also, he played down there, right. Uh, anyway, now coaching is remember it's it's teaching, you know, it's giving stuff, and maybe affecting generations, not just this kid, but this kid's son, and so on. It's a great uh, gift to do. It doesn't seem important, but then later on, you mentioned Bob Simmons. Uh, you know, it, it, it matters. Do you remember who taught chemistry or science? Who taught that psychology yeah, no. class at 9 o'clock? <laughs> Probably don't know. No. Yeah, but you remembered Doug Geldy, <laughs> a guy that was there for 25 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, As I, a grand yeah. I got to ask both of you, though. <laughs> then we get to players. Talk about the teams you played on, Reb, and you and Skip. Talk about the guys that played and where the program was. And it, you were 86, 87, is that correct? 85, 86. 85, 85 86. 86. Yeah. So we started off with a really good team that went to a regional, uh, but it was a land of misfit toys. There's no question. Yes. Uh, we had some interesting characters <laughs> on that team, and I know there was more the year before that. So – uh, we didn't uh, finish the way we wanted to. We ended up going to a regional for the first time in a while, um, and we got swept uh, in some crazy games. Uh, Lamar beat us three to two, uh, you know, and then we ended up uh, getting beat boat raced by Houston. I think they got like 15 singles or something against Robbie Smith, like 15 or 17 singles, and uh, they ended up beating us. But 
The next year we came back and uh, we really had a, a big year. And, uh, you know, Skip added more players to our roster. We lost some good players. Uh, but we, 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 we just grew off of that season. And uh, we were ranked number one for the first time probably ever at LSU history. And we won the SEC and got to the World Series. I think, you know, I, we talk about it all the time. I think you have to be there. Coach talks about that. It helps when you've been there before. And I think we had some mistakes that cost us early. And uh, so we didn't have the success we wanted to have. But, you know, we were uh, ranked number one most of the year and and uh, got, I think, did a nice job of preparing the guys for the next year at LSU. Oh, well, I want to say that uh, who did play on your team, uh, of course, I rhetorically asking, that you thought, uh, really were great players, and some may have gone on to play pro ball. Who who was on your uh, – you had Robbie Smith, God rest his soul. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and Clay he, Parker. Uh, like Clay Parker pitched, then went to the big leagues. That's for a short amount of time, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, but who Eric else? Hetzel. Oh, the Eric Hetz, Hetzel. Hetz played yeah. in the big leagues. Uh, yeah, and then we had, you know, we had a lot of really good players, Skip. You remember well, you had, Broussard came in. Well, you 30. had Bell, didn't you? Yep, Bell yeah. was a freshman. Right, he was a freshman. And uh, that was the first year we went to Mississippi State. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't play so well at Mississippi State. I dropped the line <laughs> drive. That, uh, well, By the way, I, I we're playing Palmero, Clark, Thigpen, all the group, and First guy gets on, Dan Van Cleve gets on, and then Gator Thiessen comes up, Cleve's on second, Dan Cleve's on second base, and he hits me this knuckleball that goes about 20 different directions. <laughs> and I it tips off my glove, and it would have been a double play ball. Instead, the next batter's Palmero, and he hits one in the pine trees. And then Clark comes up and rifles one. But I get into the dugout, and Skip goes, what happened? And I'm, <laughs> I was like, I, yeah, it was a knuckleball. He's like, okay, whatever, move on. So we got boat raced a little bit there, but we did overcome and we ended up winning the SEC West, you know, but there's a lot of good players. Berkey. I mean, my roommate was, uh, I didn't really know was a junior college guy was uh, Rob Leary. And uh, we became, and still are, you know, really good best friends. And, and he obviously played pro ball for a long time, managed and everything. So there was a lot of good players and I would be remiss to name them all. I mean, I, I got a, there's a whole stack of them. And then the next year, like I said, you know, we tacked on, you know, with some guys, added, you know, crazy Mike Papa John, who I love, and and all those guys. So it worked out really well. But Mark Guthrie was a teammate of mine, coach uh, in, in pro ball in the big leagues, uh, also drafted by the Twins. And then, you know, I just ran across a whole bunch of guys, you know, throughout Barry Manuel and all those guys, but just a lot of good players. Well, we, you made them great. Uh, other players bought into a system – that uh, we could win without the most gifted players if we had a better team, if we had a better belief system. And that's what you're teaching uh, those kids that play, you know, at the junior at the junior college now. And uh, tell your boys I said hello. But we're not going away or anything. That. Yeah, we want you to come back, yeah, uh, we want Reb. You to come back. We got another se uh, segment. Yep. We want to talk some Major League Baseball, which, of course, lots of experience. And talk about our boy Correa with that twins in the background. We want to talk a little bit about Correa. I heard he signed a deal today, so uh, or he's going to sign oh. a deal with the twins. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's a little action going on. But we'll come right back after this. Stay with us. We got Jeff Rebele coming back. We're going to talk some MLB baseball. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Arrested for DUI or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. Mom, what's for breakfast? 
Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Lake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. La Carreta is the place for after-work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Everybody's got a guy, and I got a guy. That's right. They can handle monthly maintenance around your business or home with their professional team members. Ask us how to get set up and what plans we offer. I got a guy. One call for most trades. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us. Our skills are broad across many, many trades. Hourly rates are available. If you want one of our team members for a couple of hours, we can get that done. We can execute everything from house calls to running errands. I got a guy. Call 985 6 662-0025 or send an email to info at I got a guy service.com. Are you a business owner? Could you use up to 26,000 back per employee? Employee retention credit program allows business owners to request a credit on payroll wages that they paid in 2020 and 2021. Go tax resolution, a division of Garrity and Associates has been helping clients apply for funds for over a year with former IRS agents reviewing the documents and building an audit trail. You are sure to maximize the credit opportunities. Best yet is this company will evaluate your entire account at no charge. And when they have qualified you and done all the work, we'll give you a total on a fee basis. Call GoTax Resolution today and see if you qualify. Call 985-722-1040. I'm Tommy Chrysan of Talking Sports with TK, and I invite you to check out my podcast, available on all major platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, search for Talking Sports with TK. We'll certainly talk a lot of LSU sports, sports across the state from Louisiana, national topics, Major League Baseball, you name it, Talking Sports with TK. We've been around for quite a while. Again, available wherever you get your podcast, search for it, Talking Sports with TK. I'm Tommy Chrysan. Hopefully, you'll enjoy my podcast very very soon. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Hold the Rope with Skip and Ken. We're here at FM Digital Studios, and uh, we're talking with Jeff Rebele, former LSU player, and, of course, Major League Baseball over 12 seasons in the big leagues. And uh, we're going to talk a little baseball with him. We're going to talk uh, about, uh, you know, Major League Baseball. And uh, for, for that, we're going to go to Marucci Sports, who sponsors Talking Baseball as a company founded and operated by current and former big leaguers, Marucci is dedicated to quality and committed to providing athletes at every level with the tools they want and need to be successful. Remember, embrace the game, show your style, add your flair, put in the hours, stay dedicated, and most importantly, honor the game. That's Marucci Sports. And uh, Reb, uh, off the air, we were talking with Skip here, and uh, one of the things I want you guys to go over is possibly the story that changed LSU baseball, the event that changed the path, and that's the hold the rope story at Auburn. Skip, why don't you lead into it? Uh, you, you remember the last game of the season we had to beat Auburn when you were to get to that regional. And uh, uh, let's see, Stan Lower went into pitch. Of course, Leary was catching. Of course, he'd pitched the night before. You know, it was just Friday, Saturday. Or we're just Saturday, Sunday, as I should say. Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, we're at Sunday, and it's over. And of course, uh, he had pitched some Sunday, but he was on the the mound when the hold the rope came out from Robbie Smith, you know, from the dugout, and he hit a little dribbler, uh, you know, back, and you just you know picked it up, threw him out, you know, um, looking like a big leaguer, and uh, that was a start, I will say, a lot of good things. Like, for instance, uh, yeah. Guthrie was a good teammate. You know, and, Reb, let me ask you this. When that came out of the dugout with Robbie Smith, Smith talked, I mean, Skip talks all the time about, like, there wasn't that firm belief system, and he had told the story earlier in the year, and all of a sudden Robbie yells it out of the dugout. And Smitty, of course, was a great teammate. Everybody loved Smitty. And coming from him, and then he said it went right around to you. Who was the third baseman at that time? Was that Marty Lanou? It was Marty Lanou, I believe, at that time. I know, um, I think Jeff Yurton had come in also, but he wasn't there playing third at the time. He might have played some outfield. Uh, but Robbie was the team captain, and uh, you know, it was getting it was extra innings, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. It was late in the game. I know yeah, that. Thirteen and, uh Yeah, it got long, and Robbie, you know, yells out, and you know, and then somebody yells. I can't remember who yelled to who, and what have you. And it's all in the. Uh, it's all in Skip's memory. I can't even remember those things. Skip remembers way more than I do. Uh, but it was it was a you know it was just a time frame where we knew the game was on the line and and what nobody understands is Skip has all these you know sayings and you know we used to sit down in the in the auditoriums at LSU and on rain days and he would go over all these different scenarios and things that would happen and and situations and and uh, you know like he became a motivator from those days. Um, and he used to use them on the field. I know. So, you know, that the guys are visual and how they, and how they do some guys learn visually. And that was just a story that kind of just stuck with us and Robbie busted it out when we needed it. And uh, we ended up winning the game. So, uh, you know, but I, I, I believe that there's just so many different things that Skip taught us, both, you know, for baseball, on the field, off the field situations that make people successful. And that was just one of the stories where guys, uh, you know, ended up winning the SEC West. Well, uh, let me let me ask you this now. Uh, you got the t- uh, two boys and the family's running real well and things are good for you in business, I'm sure. Minnesota Twins. Yeah. All right. We had a guy that uh, they they had a pitching coach. Uh, they had a guy, and uh, they were two and a half behind, uh, two and a half ahead, when he left to go to LSU. And I'm talking about uh, Wes what? Johnson. Wes Johnson. Not Jay Johnson. Not Jay, but Wes, Wes Johnson. Johnson. Yes. But what yep. I'm what I'm talking about is he came right out of the season, middle of the year. And next thing you know, they're six and a half back. Okay, not that that really made the pitching coach. But did you know Wes at all? I did not. Um, I know of him, and uh, I haven't run across as much Minnesota because they're they're they don't really play in the uh, National League, which I you know I'm closer to all those National League teams, so. Uh, occasionally I'd run across guys in spring training. Uh, you know, Tom Kelly was the big manager back in the day that I learned a lot from playing with, uh, with the Minnesota twins. And he was the guy that gave me my break to play in the big leagues. Uh, but yeah, those guys, you know, it's amazing how much information that goes on in those games and how much, you know, knowledge you have to have to, to coach players. And like you said, Skip, it's not necessarily all the, you know, the little finer things, but it's also how to deal with each individual player. Mm. And that's what makes you a great coach. So, yeah, I mean, I've run across many of pro guys that were really good coaches and some that were really not very good. And, um, you know, and I was fortunate to have the really good ones in college where you're most malleable, you know, into becoming a great player. So I'm sure Wes will do a great job. He, I'm sure he has a lot of experiences. And uh, I'm looking forward to him because I think uh, LSU has, you know, obviously a lot of talent. And it'll be interesting to see if we can get out there and, uh, and really get this pitching thing lined in. Jeff, I want to ask you this. Uh, you know, talking about coaches and building teams and everything. In Major League Baseball, Trevor Bauer, okay, uh, the Dodgers are eating a big chunk of change to, get, to release him. 
Okay, he had some mm -hmm. issues. Uh, we all know about the issues he's had off the field. How big is that uh, in the clubhouse? Like, it seems to me that there's been reports. A lot of guys just don't want him on the team. Is that big in Major League Baseball? Are there guys that just really – guys don't want him around? Uh, or do you think this is a big there's, thing with Bauer? Um, I do. I think uh, distractions on anything you make you lose focus. So anything that detracts from the team is a distraction. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, I don't know the situation. I don't know the scenario of, you know, what Trevor's going through. Um, you know, obviously it was a solid pitcher, but clearly there's something there. And, um, you know, that's just something that you're willing to, you know, part with uh, dollars that you've extended if you feel like he's going to be a distraction to the team. So, you know, this, as you've noticed, you talked about the Correa possible deal and everything else. This, there's big money in this game. This is a big industry. And, you know, you're not going to take chances um, on, on, in those type of scenarios uh, because it is such a big deal to your team. And if you're, if you're not cohesive as a team, even at the big league level, you know, you're not going to win games. Well, let me ask you this, uh, partner. Uh, you played for all this time. Now I read in the paper where Carlos Correa could be uh, coming back, you know, to the Twins. Mm -hmm. Six for, years, two hundred million. Yeah, for six years, two hundred million, which of course is like nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's close to what you made, isn't it, Brett? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's close. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it, it's hard to say. I know this is hollow, but go for it. But they needed you, you see. Uh, you fill the spot. Uh, there's a difference now when they buy somebody to fill in a spot. Uh, they needed you, and they knew why, and uh, that's why I'm proud of you. Um, I appreciate that. We're talking yeah. about Correa. What were you, what were your point about Correa? Well, my Correa had a, uh, evidently a problem yeah. with, uh, in this case, turned out to be a knee problem, where it wasn't cleared through his physical because he's certainly a 350, maybe 400. Uh, you know, top he probably paid more than anybody if he was healthy. But they found out mm -hmm. maybe he isn't. So if he isn't and goes back, like, yeah, even, even for 200 million for six years, we're kind of laughing because it isn't as much as he could have gotten. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy it's, business. It is crazy. Insane amounts of money yeah. in all sports. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it, it continues, you know, but, you know, again, I, I've been a part of the players association. I was a player rep for the twins in 94 when they went through the strike and uh, I've done, I'm still connected to the players association. I do stuff for major league baseball and the players association. So, uh, you know, there's just a lot of money in the game right now. And um, you know, those rights have been, uh, you know, granted through uh, bargaining and um, you know, but they're not going to pay it if they, if they're really not making the money, these franchises are really doing well. And, uh, oh, but there's, God. there's really good players out there, coach. I was not a great player, but today's market, I'd probably make about 2 million a oh, year. Sure. A really, a yeah, more utility guy. And uh -huh. uh, that's real stuff, man. That's really good. But they're <laughs> doing, right. they're doing a good job. Players are, are really talented now. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's an entertaining thing. If we can, Put the ball and play a little more. Reb, I'm going to ask you a philosophical question, okay? you Like you said, you've been around the game a long time. You're very astute in your knowledge. They've made some rule changes in baseball. What would you mm -hmm. do, or what do you agree with that they've done, and what would you do to improve the game if you were the commissioner? Well, I would set the precedent to pay players that win games. Um, I think players ultimately gravitate towards the money. And if you incentivize players, um, you know, if you would pay players like they used to, to score runs, drive in runs, average win games, um, you would, you would change the way the players probably attack the regular season. And that would make it a more exciting game. Um, you know, Winning baseball is gonna. Baseball's been around forever. I don't think there's a lot of rule changes that need to happen. I think the players are very talented, and they know they can get paid if they drive in a few more runs. And these statistical things, in my opinion, 
force guys into a box to do things they wouldn't normally do to win games. And if they win games, great. If they don't, they hit a home run, a three-run homer, then they get paid. So uh, you'll notice in the playoffs the game changes quite a bit Mm -hmm. because there's really no incentive. You win the game, that's the incentive. There's no extra pay, really. I mean, you get, you know, you win the game, you get paid, but there's no extra salary for, you know, driving in a home run, you know, or hitting a home run or driving in runs. It's about winning the games. So you see the game played differently. That's the way I would do it. Make sure they get incentivized financially by playing the game correctly. That's a more exciting game. Well, that, that was well said and uh, not surprised from a guy like yourself. They did make a rule change, uh, for instance, on a shift. Uh, I, I understand that they can't uh, – well, they have to be on the dirt. The heels have to be on mm-hmm. the dirt. Uh, and you can't put more, more than one guy on each side of the ball. Uh, so, he, Although he'd have to stop at second base if he was shortstop or second base. What do you think about that? I believe, Coach, what you probably believe, that if they throw 11, you know, a bunch of guys over on one side, they throw four guys on one side, I'm going to hit it the other side and get on base because that's my game. Um, That wouldn't have been a problem for me. I would have loved to have seen that. They wouldn't probably shift on a guy like me. Um, But the guys that, like I said, are getting paid to drive the ball over the fence, they can go ahead and, you know, at any time shift because they're not going to try and get that single ground ball through the left side very oh. often until you yeah. skip the playoffs. I agree. So I don't think opinion. I don't think they're going to try and get a base hit ever. Uh, they go up and swing yeah. as hard as they possibly can three times, and uh, doesn't matter that he struck out a, a Reggie Jackson type hundred and sixty. Hell, they strike out two hundred and twenty five times a year, and nobody thinks mm-hmm. twice about it. So yeah, I think that's that's awful. And uh, I think what they're trying to do is get more base hits. Uh, I think what they're trying to do is fatten the bases to 18 inches, get a few more stolen bases. You know what I mean? If you, mm. Well, baseball's always been a very stoic sport. They don't like change. <clears throat> so mm-hmm. to have the change they're what having. Do you, what do you think? Do you like that, Coach? Do you think that's, that's going to make a difference? Uh, do I think it's going to make a difference? Uh I think it's a, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to make a difference in a lot of games. What you said, of course, matter of factly, not a lot of people understand. When the playoffs started and it was the best of seven or in two out of three and then mm-hmm. three out of five and then four out of seven, it's a different kind of baseball. See, it is. And that's like you played at LSU. You were taught to win tournaments. Two out of three, three out of five. One, uh, you had to win with four teams or six teams when you played. And uh, yes. <clears throat> my job as a manager, or your job as a coach, uh, job get the guy up to bat when you really need him. And we had uh, a guy at third base with nobody, with one out, and you had to hit. We had the right guy up, and you ripped yeah. him in. <laughs> With a dribbler to third. <laughs> Didn't matter. It looks good in the but scoreboard. I, but I did the first. It, it was the old Boots Garland, get up and run. Yeah. You know, in the right those hands so. were moving. Uh, what? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch yeah, your accelerator. Was, yeah. <laughs> hey, I get a lot of credit for being savvy because Skip was like, oh, it was raining and it was muddy. And <laughs> Reb ran inside the line in the grass where it was better. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of where my, my bad swing took me, Coach. But I'll take it. You know, it got us to the college we'll all, series. We'll so. all take it. Believe me, it was yeah. a wonderful thing. We'll all take it. Well, Reb, yeah. uh, yeah. Thanks for taking time out away from your family and out of your day for being with us. We wish you the best of luck with your academy and with your family. And uh, let's hope we have a great baseball season. We all get to meet in Omaha and uh, visit with Jay Johnson. We all get to visit. We're looking forward to a great season of baseball coming up with LSU. And thank you as a guy who came on board after you were here for the foundation that you and your teammates helped build to get LSU to where it is today. Because without you, it couldn't have been done, of course, without the guy next to me. Couldn't have been done. Thanks, uh, Jeff. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys are the best, and I thank you guys for having me on. And uh, always, whenever I show up, I'm coming to see you guys. So I love seeing you guys. All right, Rep. Take care, and thanks a lot. 
Folks, we'll be right back after this. It's time for Skip's motivational moment. He's going to motivate you, Reb. Keep an eye on him. We'll be right back after this to hold the rope. Hey, everyone. This is Buddy, our new team member. Why are you smiling like that? Jerry Lane Chevrolet, what's your favorite color car? We have SUVs, we have trucks, we have cars. Oh, and we have fast cars. Okay, we need this car done by the end of the day. All done. What the? All righty, and if you sign right here, we can have your car ready for you. Spreading joy and Christmas cheer for all of Baton Rouge to hear. for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www www.acadianframe.com. If you live on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain and you have a son or daughter that plays baseball or softball, you need to know about Six Rings Baseball Camps. Held at beautiful Coquille Park Recreational Facility and run by Dan Canterbury, Six Rings will teach baseball skills, play instructional games, and have fun playing the great game of baseball. Go to our website at www.sixringsbaseball.com for more information on our upcoming Thanksgiving and Christmas baseball camps. Six Rings Baseball. Learn the game to love the game. As owner and operator of China Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. China's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute for a reservation call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the final segment here of uh, Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Thanks to Jeff Rebelay. Great segment there. Thoughts. Thanks to Brock Cantro, but we're going to go to Skip's motivational moment brought to you by Marucci Sports. And Skip, let's uh, lead into it. Let's, you got well, a good story lead, Leading in, I want to uh, quickly do this because the coach from Georgia used the phrase hunt, hunted and hunter. And about the 1950s, early 60s, coach came out, we we're always the hunted one. Uh, meaning that they were the best and everybody below was hunting them. Oh, they were the the best of the best. Well, I use that and in a phrase by what I considered a guy to have the most, the greatest disparity of all time was an actual track and field runner, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But first we, you know, take him out in right field. I would say tonight would be a night where we were going to play uh, in-state school 
not as good as we were. All right. And we were being hunted. And they were the hunter, so to speak. And let me tell you how it applies when you give it to Edwin Moses. No one in the history of athletics boys had a stranglehold on a single event like Edwin Moses. No one was ever more consistent. He was 6'2", 170-pounder. He's a physics major from Moorhead, Morehouse State University in Atlanta. His event, the 400 meter hurdles, hurdles. He ran exactly 13 steps between hurdles. He won 107 straight matches for nearly 10 years. But he won 122 of 125 races in a 10-year period. He was hunted by everybody. He was always the one to beat, like us. Tonight we're being hunted again. Well, when Edwin Moses went to Seoul, Korea, and he was going to try and be the first time and three-time winner gold medal, and I was there, actually saw that as an Olympic coach, to be the, he was going to be the oldest and the first three-time champ. And listen to this, he ran his fastest time ever. But Andre Phillips, age 29, Chase Moses for years finally caught him. But Moses got the best out of himself. Tonight I'm asking you to make sure that you play the best game you can. And then I want to get the most out of those and the best who have chased us tonight. Or, well, let's be consistent. Four great at-bats. All the pitches, great defense. I know you'll do that because you represent LSU, your family, and your maker. Tonight, let's play like champions. That, that Dan, that was a story that uh, had a lot of play when you consider that Coach last night used it again. You know, the hunter hunted, and he turned it around. So coaches are motivating in every way they can. They got to have in a language like Jeff Reveille said, to communicate with each player. Evidently, uh, Kirby Smart can do that. Uh, no doubt about it. You can see by the way he talks, the way they look him in the eye, the way they jump. Uh, no doubt about it. They don't have to because they're national champions, you can tell. Coach, one of the things that, uh, that you often mentioned in your own coaching is, and Nick Saban says this, and now Kirby Smart, of course, uh-huh. It's one thing to get to the top of the mountain and win a national championship. The hardest thing to do is to stay there because everybody playing you is the underdog and they have some extra motivation and it's hard to uh, get your kids up. Did you say your hardest jobs were after you won trying to get the team oh, to sure. stay up there? Just like they said last night, after you win one, the hardest thing to do is to get the kids re-motivated, you know, to win another one. Uh, you hear that a lot. Um to be very frank, we were a consistent program. We always uh, expected to win. It wasn't too tough for me. But uh, there aren't many, just LSU and Stanford. They were really the only Arizona two schools. State. And A&M. Oh, that's right. Arizona State and USC, those are the four. Well, going back, though, I was going to say, Texas in the Louis. modern era, before was before Arizona State and the and their partner, you know, right next door, USC. You know, those are the two. And Arizona, of course. It's funny, though. We were talking last night <laughs> before the game. And we were saying, you know, who do you like here? And you say, well, Georgia's a better team, but it's hard to repeat. It's hard <laughs> to go back to back. Well, you know, I'd love I'm ready to go back to that and make sure that you heard it. Because you don't have to be. A, 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 if you're a sports fan and you don't agree with me, then. Oh, gosh, I'm surprised. There's one that must be emotional because uh, it didn't matter what it was, underdog, whether it was a championship. Uh, it didn't matter that uh, Stetson Bennett had to play real well, which he did again, or other people had to make there. Georgia had the best players. Makes Bigger. you a really good coach when you have the well, best Well, uh, but he recruited him, right. and he – beefed them up every year, and they, they just didn't end up at Georgia. I mean, the guy did a great job of getting them there. TCU was terrific 
<laughs> the coach who did a great job, and he's a great coach. But no, nobody in America, in the history of football or coaching, it, could have exchanged that score. You know, like some people I know, uh, they were 13 and a half point underdog. Whoa, that's a lot of points. I mean, and remember, they could have scored 75 or 80. Yeah, they backed off. And you know, they had to slow it down. Remember, they were playing with their freshmen. <laughs> when they were the second team quarterback. I tell you, I, I got to say this. The most, <laughs> I've never watched a game I can, that I can remember in my 64 <laughs> years on the planet. Probably... Uh, 58 of them where I could really understand what was going on. That's right. Where at halftime, they said, wow, this is a great opportunity to give your freshmen some national championship exposure and experience. <laughs> like how many times do you hear that one at halftime? <laughs> you don't hear that often. That's right. Yeah, well, folks, we're going to be right back. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching us. But come back. We're going to wrap it up for Hold the Rope for this week's segment. we got some announcements about what's coming up in the future. So stay tuned to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it too. Sammy's better than ever. Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable Storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at DependableStorage.com. La Carreta is the place for after-work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Gidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Daigle, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffitt, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201-9300. That's 201-9300. Are you a baseball fan, LSU fan, sports fan, or success fan? Purchase your copy of Everything Matters in Baseball, the story of the building of the most successful college baseball program in history. This book details the path to the decade of excellence culminating in five national championships in 10 years at LSU. Starting well, from humble beginnings, Skip Burtman changed baseball, baseball to LSU, the SEC, and the entire college the baseball world. Get your copy of this entertaining and inspiring story today by going to www.acadianhouse.sports.com.
Hi, folks, and welcome back to Hold the Rope. We're closing it down here on Tuesday. Uh, we got some announcements to make. Next week, we're going to be on Tuesday again. This will be our last Tuesday show of the season because on the 22nd, it's the first pitch baseball banquet. Skip and I and Lloyd. Ooh, that's a big show. We're going show. live like the red carpet at the ESPYs. Yeah. We're going live. You're well, going to see cor- Skip cor- in a coat and tie. I'm telling you. What, where is the banquet? The banquet, uh, the first pitch banquet, sponsored Crown by TAF Plaza. and the Coach Committee, is at the Crown Plaza. There's still some tickets available, so go online and get your tickets. But it's going to be a big event. they got plenty of seats. going to be over 750 people there. Well, Coach. More than that, yeah. And uh, – it's a, we're going to have all guests. We're going to have players. We're going to have coaches. We're going to have boosters. We're going to have all kinds of people. Uh, full hour and a half show. We're going to start at 5 o'clock and go to 6.30 because the banquet actually begins with the speaking and everything. 6.30, that's the kickoff to the baseball season. From that moment on, we'll be on Sunday nights from 6 to 7.30. All right, so let's do it again in the sense that look for us January 22nd. Look for us next Tuesday, the 17th. Then look for us on the 22nd, Whoa. which is a Sunday. And then from that point on, on the 29th, <laughs> it's the next Sunday. And that'll be Hold the Rope I know, on but Sunday that, nights. That first, uh, that first Sunday is 22nd. January. Yes, yeah, the 22nd. Second. All right, and there's a Second. baseball yeah. banquet, remember, at the Grand Plaza Hotel. About 7 o'clock, maybe even 6.30. Come and get a drink, Apple Ball. It says there'll be at least a thousand people. Uh, it's already done like it's been. Jay will be there with all the players. It's the place to be. Well, we're going to be there with Lloyd running the show from there, like we did last year on the radio. On the radio. We did it on the radio sure. last year. A lot of guests, good time, real a lot of electricity here. So if you if you're not watching the show, buy a ticket and get on out there. That's a great time. And you'll Folks, have a good ball. Nice job today, Dan. And next week, we got a couple of guests. Whoa, coming in. We mentioned week, them today. We got Rob Leary, Rebel A's roommate. We're going to talk some more Major League Baseball. Tentatively, we're not confirmed, but I think we're going to. He's got to work around some schedules. We're looking to have Michael Bunnett, the sports information director for uh, and assistant AD for LSU Athletics. So, be a great show. I have a lot of information. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week. And don't forget, the 22nd at the First Pitch <laughs> Banquet. Right, Hold thanks, the rope. Thanks for listening and, sh- and watching. Hold the rope. We'll see you next week. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at DependableStorage.com. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left, and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Thank you for watching the Hold the Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland. Join us next Tuesday at 6 p.m.